Don't Diss My Ability is made possible through the generous support of Full Circle Community Thrift Store, helping individuals or families living with cancer. Our goal is to help alleviate the stresses of daily financial obligations during this time by providing financial assistance to those in need. Full Circle Community Thrift Store. Living Innovations. Providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include community connections, which facilitates employment, skill development, and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. Natural Care Wellness Center has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine seacoast for 18 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. Natural Care Wellness Center, offering gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuroemotional techniques, and massage therapy. And by One Sky Community Services. For over 30 years, One Sky has taken great pride in overcaring for those with developmental disabilities and acquired brain disorders. Dedicated to every individual it serves, giving them full comprehensive support and services essential to fulfilling the personal and professional potential and becoming a successful member of their community. Serving 24 Seacoast communities, call 603-436-6111 for further information. And by TMS Architects. New England design redefined. See me beautiful. Look for the best in me. It's what I really am and all I want to be. It may take some time. It may be hard to find. But see me beautiful. See me beautiful. Each and every day Could you take a chance Could you find a way To see me shining through In everything I do And see me beautiful See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful. Thank you. Alison Decker. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Ron Itamanio and we're back with Don't Diss My Ability. Um, on my right we have... Katie Harvey. And on my left... Pamela Sollenberger. And our guest today... I'm uh, Maury Elsasser. Are you sure about that, Maury? <laughs> well, I have an identity crisis at this point. But... <laughs> well, unfortunately that's not the subject of our talk oh. today. It's no. going to be on alcohol <laughs> and drug addiction. Oh. If you want to come back for identity crisis, we can sure. we can schedule you in the future. <laughs> yeah, it's a great question, though. It I? is, isn't it? Uh, mixed feelings about losing uh, one of our sponsors, Full Circle Thrift Store, uh, a wonderful place that sponsored us for years. Their profits go to cancer patients. I've always felt guilty about taking money from them. She's a great friend, a lovely lady. Um, and I hope you still shop there. It's on 236 in Elliott, Full Circle Thrill Store. And uh, 
but uh, she felt her money should go elsewhere and the Hanser help people and I totally agree with that. And so to take her place, to take that uh, spot on our underwriters uh, list, uh, I approached my friend Jeff Collard who has the uh, agency in Elliott, uh, Edward, Jones, Ed, Edward Jones agency. And uh, I personally, uh, full disclosure, I've been dealing with them for 20 years or so. They're wonderful to deal with, uh, excellent, small office. It's not like some huge conglomerate there. You, you know, they know everybody and uh, they know you and they know your family and they know how to help you. I, I, uh, that's who popped into our mind because I, I didn't want to go to just anybody. I wanted to go to somebody who actually believed in what they were doing. And, and uh, so with 100% endorsement i'm thrilled that they're now uh, sponsoring uh, don't Dis my ability oh, we're your heritage is going to be a big part of this story and that's going to be a touchy subject i think because uh mm -hmm. you being a, a an alcohol and drug counselor you yourself have an experience uh with substance abuse and uh, Talking to you off the air, uh, you're you're connecting this to your heritage. So why don't we talk about that? Mm -hmm. How do you connect it with your heritage? And well, I think it's uh, uh, it comes back to probably uh, uh, how you see yourself. And uh, uh, I think when uh, you know we're all born, we are we know who we are. I think. Uh, and uh, over the eight years of growing up, you're, you encounter the world which isn't always friendly. Uh, and you get messages and you become indoctrinated in a, in a number of different ways. And, uh, mm -hmm. and those experiences, they kind of stick to you. You know, what people say to you. Um, and, uh, uh, and it uh, impacts how you feel about yourself and then uh, what you do about it. So, but uh, your heritage, mm -hmm. you were you were saying off the air that you're mm -hmm. you're you're connecting some of your mm -hmm. issues with abuse yeah. to your Native American heritage and growing up uh, with parents that themselves who were, had problems with substance abuse. Yeah. Well, I think it's uh, well. My mother uh, is uh, half uh, Lakota and half uh, Irish. And she uh, inherited, uh, uh, you know, a lot of prejudice. Mm -hmm. She experienced a lot of prejudice. Mm -hmm. um, and did she experience prejudice coming from the Lakota or mm -hmm. the Irish? It was where was the prejudice coming from? Well, it's from the, you know, the. the she was, they, they were the only uh, uh, Native American family in, in the town, so. Oh, you were uh, the only one. What's that? You were the only one? Yeah. Oh, my you were goodness. The only, yeah. You were the only Native American oh, my family in the town. You said that your mother was half Irish and half Lakota. Yeah. You didn't say the heritage of your father? No. Oh, well, well he's, was, he's white. Um, um, well, in Nebraska, uh, it's settled by, what, uh, the Europeans. So I grew up in a ethnically, what, uh, Anglo- Mm -hmm. uh, American yeah. culture, uh, and of course the, the movement of, that my grandfather and great grandfather inherited was to uh, assimilate. Um, my great grandfather was a chief. He was uh, uh, um, he assimilated by giving up all of his uh, uh, culture. And, um, Why did he do this? Well, he. Um, he had a, his own vision of things that uh, he had one living daughter, uh, my grandmother, who he um, uh, chose uh, and arranged a marriage to the Irish homesteader. And Did he arrange it to an Irish homesteader because he didn't want his granddaughter marrying a, a Native American? No, his, his vision was that uh, the way of life was over. Uh, uh, that, uh, so he didn't want her to marry a Native American? Is that what you're saying, or I got it wrong? 
No, yeah, he didn't. Uh, when he s shook uh, this Irish homesteader's hand, it was calloused. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on that, he said uh, he would support her in this new industrial age, that the, the way of life of the Lakota is over in terms of the buffalo. And uh, uh, this was all part of during the Dawes Act, where this is about assimilating you know, uh, the Indians into a, the white culture. Mm -hmm. So his daughter went to the missionary school and wasn't allowed to speak her language, all those things. So, yeah. and uh, so the, uh, and that's where he told his daughter, uh, "You will marry this man, and any children you have, have them marry out of the Indian race." So that because this is a downtrodden race, and this is the, the he way didn't he didn't want that for the next generation. Right. So. Okay. That was his gift to him. Okay. So these images were there, so I couldn't tell anybody that I was proud until uh, I realized uh, I uh, I was more ashamed of it than uh, than uh, probably because I didn't know what it was. People say, "Well, you should be proud. It's a beautiful way of life." You know, the, mm -hmm. they see the nature and the earth is, you know, the, the brother is their deer, things like that. Said, well, that's great, but I don't know what that means. Until I, uh, I came to New England. I, I came to New England to work in Outward Bound. Uh, don't jump ahead yeah. so quickly. Okay. All right. Talk about the alcohol in, in the mm -hmm. house. And yeah. the, you're saying that's yeah. affected you? Or? Well, it's, a, it's a, you know, witnessing things like, uh, the, the, whether it's the violence mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not remembering the parent, your parents not remembering what they did mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a blackout. Against each other? Or yeah, in a blackout. Mm -hmm. They were blacked uh, out. They was there any violence against you? Oh, yeah. So, uh, and uh, we all kind of uh, were subject to some of that, but it's, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, how did we survive that? Well, one, we, we all kind of clung together. You know, there was uh, 11 in my family. So I had seven sisters and three brothers, so we all were kind of uh, raised each other. But but I, I don't want to you know depict my parents as totally bad. But uh, I mean, when there is that, you are you are preoccupied with that. You're saying when good people yeah. Yeah. drink, yeah. they can get violent. It doesn't right. mean you know they're bad people. No, yeah. it's, uh, they, and there's the genetic link, isn't there, Maury? Well, genetically to Native Americans. Yeah. And Irish. Well, they haven't had exposure to it like the other cultures, right. for one. And, uh, uh, it is a, uh, in, in the culta, they, they describe alcohol as a ectomi, which is a, is a, a trickster. It's, uh -huh. it, weaves a, it weaves a web of deception. Interesting. It makes you think it's something that it isn't. And then it, yeah. it eventually bites you. But, I think that's a great description of it because it yeah. is a the trickster. I like yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. But it's, uh, uh, I didn't like, I made the connection that you know, you're acting this way because of the drinking, the alcohol. And I said, I'm never going to drink. I'm never gonna you said that. that to yourself. Yeah. You're never going to yeah, drink. Yeah, I'm never going to do that. I don't want to be, I don't want any of that to happen. I don't like it. How about no. the, your other brothers and sisters? Did any of them say the same thing? Did they oh, have, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We all saw what, the, what was the cause of the problem. How many of you, I know you're going to go into your own story yeah. about your own problems yeah. with alcohol, but did mm -hmm. they have any, uh, did they have their own problems with alcohol too, your brother, any of your brothers? Oh, yeah, yeah, they, um, uh, there was, um, what, there's, uh, out of the 11, 10 became uh, you know, addicted to alcohol. Mm -hmm. Out of 11, 10. 11, yeah. and one, uh, you know, didn't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so I would say... Um, it's it's a uh, well. There's the argument about nature versus nur nurture. You know, the, is this genetic, physically predisposed, or is it uh, just the environment? Well, and it's hard to tell. Well, it's probably both. You know, it's, yeah, uh, both. You know, I'm, uh, uh, the cause probably. Uh, what does it change if you know why? Yeah. Um, Have you ever talked to your brothers and sisters and said, mm -hmm. even though we mm -hmm. had these two mm -hmm. parents? Yeah. who had trouble mm -hmm. with this and couldn't handle it mm -hmm. and became addicted. Mm -hmm. You know, why did we go down the same path? What were the conversations with your brothers and sisters? Because they went 
Mm -hmm. Seems like you, that's what happened. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, we do have those conversations now that we're older and uh, we reflect on, uh, because one, we, we understand each other. We have this perspective of what that was like. And, uh, but if, you, if, you're, if people are out there who grow up and there was no alcohol in the family, mm -hmm. they're going to see that the natural reaction would be horrified as a child of abusive mm -hmm. parents who could be at times abusive, that the last thing in the world that they would want to think logically is that I would want to go down the same path and be and we get into drinking myself yeah. but that's what people would think but yeah. you're saying that that does not happen is it just no. your family or is it more common because when you're in your professional life mm -hmm. the panel is mm -hmm. nodding mm -hmm. that no it's the reverse that the parents get into that and they see them handling is it about this is how I handle the stresses of life mm -hmm. I go to drink or drugs or whatever and that's that's the message I mean I I feel like an idiot saying that because I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. Well, you guys are the uh, professionals. Well, I think it's one. It's just about being connected to the people you love. I love my parents. Yeah. You know, always will. Did then. Didn't like what they did, but it's. Uh, yeah. uh, but why would you want to go down the same path as them, Maury? A connection, you know. So you're, well, you're okay. That's it. Yeah. 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 By going down their same yeah. path and having the same mm -hmm. problems mm -hmm. they had. Mm -hmm. You're, you feel yeah. connected to them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, I understood my dad more yeah. uh, okay. when I uh, was sobering up. Uh, there, there's things that were said uh, around and about the drinking. You know, I had an uncle who, who died uh, of uh, cirrhosis. Of the, and uh, my mother would talk about his drinking, and he uh, would say, I love drinking. I'm going to die drinking. And that's what happened. Uh, and this, you know, the payoff, the reward of drinking is, uh, you know, this euphoric, no problems, and uh, and uh, that's uh, what what he's talking about. And uh, the first when, time. When did you start? When did you start drinking? How when old? I was, uh, I was like 18. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first time I got drunk, I knew what he's talking about, and that's what I said. I said, I'm going to stay drunk the rest of my life. Your first. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I knew what he was talking about. The, the, the feeling uh, was uh, kind of got me. I knew, and uh, I, my, my life centered around that for the next four years. And uh, so, at 18, you started drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you putting a limit of four years on it? Did you quit after that? Well, uh, yeah, because I saw myself doing the things that I said I would never do. Mm. You know. These, uh, these memories came to me about, uh, you know, my dad used to say things, well, I got drunk because of you. And uh, I, I was saying those things yeah. to my girlfriend and, you know, and I was, uh, I wasn't a happy drunk anymore. I was, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't. So what did that do to your relationship with your girlfriend? Well, you know, she, she told me, so well, if you think that, uh, you had a problem. Well, that isn't what I wanted to hear, but it's what I needed to hear. And she kind of did a 180 degrees and walked away mm -hmm. and uh, didn't see her since. But, you know, this is, so I got those messages along the way mm -hmm. that said, you know, the, remember what you said. I'm never going to do this. And I realized uh, uh, that I, I had a problem, so I went to treatment. And uh, this was in March, March 3rd, uh, 1979. I was in treatment for 30 days, and, I, uh, and my counselor asked me about uh, being Native American. I said, oh, I'm proud of it. I said, well, I'll be honest. And uh, I said, well, I am. I'm proud of it. And, and then uh, he asked me, well, uh, he saw that I was wearing contact lenses. And he said, well, what? What about those lenses? What do you, why do you wear those? Said, well, they're good for your eyes. And he said, no, nah, I'll be honest. You wear them because you look better. And that's kind of the first time I got a taste of what it means to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, well, you're right. And that's when I, I kind of started really questioning a lot of things. How honest am I about things? And you know, one of them is I realized I really felt a lot of shame about being Native American. And 
my counselor says, you, you are on a quest here now to find out what is it to be Indian. So I, I sought out, um, I'm, I'm still on a quest in, in uh, learning about it. In, uh, and I found uh, teachers uh, in the school I went to in South Dakota, uh, mentors, people on the, on the reservation and things, and I learned about the culture. And I participated in the ceremonies, uh, purification lodge, and uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, there's uh, the sun dance, a lot of different ceremonies. Mm -hmm. uh, I carry a, a, a chinupa, a pipe to pray with. So these things have uh, fulfilled my life. Uh, you know, sobering up in AA uh, was kind of springboard into. Uh, Can you, you talk know, about your AA experience? What happened when you first went to meetings and all that? Well, I, it's, it's, it was a, they shined a light on things that I, I hid in the shadows, my own shadow I didn't want to see. And they spoke the truth, you know, their truth, and I identified with it, and I could see myself uh, identifying with, what, you know, uh, the way they were living their life and what the solutions were. And uh, so it gave me hope. I didn't feel so alone. I, most of my life is like trying to guess at what is normal, you know, uh, mm. guessing and you know, watching people, what they see on TV, whatever, you know. Well, who am I, and how, how are you supposed to act? <coughs> so, uh, the uh, uh, AA, seeing the truth, uh, people speaking the truth, because you can't lie, and you can't pretend, you can't. They're going to know you're lying. All right, yeah. It's, uh, you know, you're, they, they set it up so that, uh, you know, just, they move the egos out of the room so that the truth can, uh, is uh, spoken there, and you, you hear. Yeah. Um, the authentic selves of what, what one is going through, the, the suffering, and also the solutions. You know, the, there's, a, there's great lessons in there. You know, I, it's a great meditation. I love the, uh, to go into a meeting and not necessarily speak, but I'm, there is this uh, wisdom that comes out of there because they move all these egos out and uh, it's like they channel this uh, wisdom and truth, uh, things I need to hear. Wisdom's not cheap. To get to that place mm -hmm. where you're speaking yeah. wisdom at these mm -hmm. meetings, yeah. there's a lot of price to pay for that wisdom. That's right. Well said. Yeah. That's well said, yes. It's, uh, uh, it comes at a price. Um, the, uh, you don't get it from reading the book. Not all no. the way. No. no. That's a different kind of knowledge, but this is like, yeah. like uh, knowing. Um, the... Uh, I don't, I see them all as uh, teachers. I, you know, I have no friends, I have no enemies, I have only teachers. And, uh, well, you're a so, teacher too, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I think I am by modeling that uh, I don't know it all. <laughs> and I, it always comes back to that. I, uh, I asked the question that when I was a kid, why are they doing this? And uh, it bothers me. So uh, it always comes to, so, so I said, I'm going to be a counselor. I'm going to uh, help people. You know, that's what I, I did. And, uh, or at least um, that's what my motivation was. I want to understand what is it that uh, causes people to do this stuff. So I went to school, studied psychology, and, uh, and uh, thought I'd find some answers. Well, I did, but I also found I wasn't asking the right questions always, but always, uh, it always comes around to uh, uh, I don't know. And I really, uh, that's kind of what I build my, uh, my practice on. If I'm sitting with a, a patient, I'm, uh, if I tell myself I have the answer for this person, I'm, it's not going to work. I have to sit there and be curious uh, with a question. I don't know what will help, and uh, I don't know what you want, but you're, I want them like to teach you, What's it like when you finally realize that mm -hmm. you are helping somebody you're getting through? Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's a, um, there is that connection with them that, that they receive, they accept, 
and uh, uh, it keeps me coming back. When that, uh, it's kind of like a, if you play golf, you know, you, you fail more, <laughs> right? But I love you, to watch golf, but oh. you know, it's like the golf ball is yeah. way more intelligent than <laughs> the people playing the golf, you know, hitting the ball, you know. Well, you're right. You're right. What are you you're running around chasing this white ball in a pasture, but it's a. Yeah, if you really like, think about yeah, it, yeah. you know, yeah. you should treat people like that. You should treat golfers. You know, well, yeah. Golfers who drink, you know. Well, That's your problem. You're drunk and you're trying to play golf, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the wonder you can't get the ball in the hole. That's right. Well, yeah, what are possessions of you doing this, you know? Well, I only play golf to brush up on my cussing, anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that and drywalling, you know. It's a, yeah. I hang drywall to brush up on my husband. But it is, a, it is a rush, isn't it, when you're treating somebody, when you're talking mm -hmm. with somebody and you're helping them and you're getting through? Well, it is. It is a, it's what keeps me coming back because it, it matters, you know. It's, uh, and it's a work, like you say, it does, it, it come, you know, there are, the wisdom comes at a price and I, there's wisdom in there and I want to know what it is that they know about their solutions. Because it helps you? Well, not only that, um, I suspect uh, it's the same thing that helped me, and it, 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 it generally is. This unconditional acceptance of not being judged, you know, and uh, that's the way out of hell, is uh, the safe yeah. place, yeah. and I, uh, that's what helped me. There was somebody who said, you're worth listening to, and uh, you have a story, and I want to know they genuinely were interested in it. And they, uh, whatever they said to me fit me. So they were listening, they used my words, they honored my words and, uh, and my feelings. You know, they, they even recognized and I didn't, gave them names that I didn't know they had. I didn't know uh, emotions had names. You know, so if you can name it, you can tame it. I just was having all these uh, emotions you know, uh, shame. I didn't know that was what it was. I just uh, felt anxious and, you know. I was, it was coming out in my behavior, you know, and people didn't like me because of my behavior, but uh, it's uh, all these feelings inside that, uh, you know, you don't really necessarily tame. Yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, those are, the source of those are a lot, a lot of what uh, one tells the oneself, you know. Um, I always tell myself, I. Uh, was a dumb Indian, you know. And the, you know, the good news is that we listen to ourselves, and it's also the bad news. We listen to ourselves, and it's, uh, and we listen to what might other be, people tell us. Might be time yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Might be time at this stage mm -hmm. of your life mm -hmm. to uh, yeah. tell you something different. Yeah. That mm -hmm. you're, that you're a wise human being. Mm -hmm. Learn yeah. lessons, mm -hmm. maybe painfully. Mm. But uh, you're no longer that dumb person anymore. No? Yeah. If you were st still laying on the floor drinking, then dumb yeah. might fit. But yeah. you're not that guy anymore. Yeah, no? yeah. So those tapes well. can. You're, you're the guy mm. who paid mm. a price for others. Yes. Mm. When you yes. go to help people, mm. um, you know, they're they're going to listen to you because you you didn't like five minutes before read this out of a book, and now I'm telling you what to do. Mm. They're going to listen to you, or they're not going to listen to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to know from the first word that comes out of your mouth that they're yeah. in the right place. That this is—is is this person speaking my language? Mm. They just know my world. Mm. Yeah. It's just unfortunate you had to pay such a steep price for it. You know. Yeah. That's the way it is. Well, it groomed me to be. Uh, what I'm doing now, it, uh, and I, uh, I think of it that way, that I, uh, uh, I think I'm in the right jungle. <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, living a solution uh, in my life, and uh, it's uh, just as uh, the disorder is contagious, <laughs> I think the wellness can be contagious. And it's, uh, it's, uh, Lee, Pamela, any yeah. questions? Um, 
-hmm. when you were talking earlier, all I was thinking was empowering. How mm. you were empowering, and others were empowering you to get clean. Mm. And you do that for others. And when you empower someone, they honor, you honor them. You know, you respect mm -hmm. them. Mm. You put them first. And that's the most important thing you can do. Mm. You know? And then they go from there. Right. Yeah. Okay, do they want it or do they not? You know? right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, a, that's exactly right. And that's kind of what I experience, uh, like in your work. Right. right. There's nobody more important in the world than the person sitting right in front of you. Is what uh, I experienced with in talking with you, right? Well, right. I mean, it's it's a, it's the client who's right. Do they want to get well or not? You know, you, you look at that. I like it what you're saying. You're saying you're here sitting in front of me. Mm -hmm. You know, as somebody I'm counseling. Right. You know, you're the right now. You're the most important person in the world for me. That's right. They need right. to know that. They need to yeah. feel that you're not just got your looking at your wrist to exactly. see when the next patient is coming or, yeah, right. you know. Right. right now, there's nobody else that exists. There's no time, there's yeah. nothing. Yeah. It's just you right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. like, yeah. that is an enormous gift to people. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I wish we were like that with, uh, mm -hmm. with people in our lives. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. instead of saying, well, like instead of saying mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, but I really got my mind on something else, what I'm gonna do later or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, can't wait to cut you free there and go on to do with something else. I mean, it's a really great life lesson. That, isn't that it? you know, mm -hmm. I know they're there to try to get get free of substance, but mm -hmm. no, I got goosebumps when you described that. You, you know, we got a connection there on that. You, you get it. Yeah. You know what that's yeah. about. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Be I know. present. Yeah. I, I know. If I get in trouble with my wife, it's because I'm thinking of something else. So I need to go on this, and uh, you know, all of a sudden I'm in a I'm in a deep pit there. Yeah. No one's helping me getting out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's that's yeah. exactly what it is. And that, you know, somebody uh, either they were paid to do it, or that's they did it. They, uh, they right. carved out that time. They gave me this yes. undivided and yes. uh, honored as you. Just, right. so, I love that word, honor, the honor, mm -hmm. uh, what I had to say. That's right. Uh, and it gave me that feeling of safety that I could mm -hmm. talk about yeah. this. Mm -hmm. so. and, you, and you don't have to understand, mm -hmm. you don't have to understand them so much. It's just saying, well, that's what they need from me right now. Mm -hmm. Even my, my three-year-old granddaughter, sorry to talk about personal stuff, yeah. this is such this, oh, no, one's, this, one's, this one's really got me. This, this three-year-old comes up and wants me to do her nails, paint her nails. See? And she's got, her nail is like, a, I don't know, it's like a BB, the size of a BB. You know, it's like, well, I don't know if my eyes are that good. So I'm painting her nails, and she's holding them perfectly still, and I'm painting her nails. And, uh, you know, all went well. She didn't, she didn't say, Grandpa, hi, John, how you doing, buddy? What finger did you hang up? Was that the right finger? Uh, that's, that's, that's shameful on your part. Yeah. All right, one minute. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, but I was right there for her. Yeah. See, that, you got I wasn't her thinking done. of anything else because I didn't want to get nail polish on her nose or anything and then hear it from the mother. You know. Well, All she right. would tell you if you're not paying attention to. We're gonna. We're right. We're just gonna take a break, uh, or and then we're gonna show. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So we, we can yeah. probably fit that in later, or we could uh, take a deep breath, and we'll, we'll just keep going. Just they're gonna, We have this segment, and halfway through, I didn't know that. So when we realize it's a national program, goes all over the country, we've got different uh, health professionals mm -hmm. um, who have pre-recorded segments, uh, and they're three or four minutes, sometimes five. They could be on any health subject under the sun. And uh, so out there in, in the public, they will see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, my name is Katie Cole with Portsmouth Physical Therapy. A current physical therapy treatment that is being seen more frequently is called blood flow restriction therapy. What is blood flow restriction therapy? 
Blood flow restriction therapy is a method of strength training that involves restricting, restricting the blood flow out of working muscles to trick the body into getting stronger by creating a metabolic stress response. What does it do? Blood flow restriction therapy promotes muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. We can now maximize strength gains safer and faster without the side effects of traditional load-based training like delayed onset muscle soreness, joint stress, and micro tearing. Is it safe? Blood flow restriction training allows us to safely train muscles at very low loads, limit muscle and joint strain while achieving the same results as heavy lifting. It should be performed by a trained physical therapist who is certified to, in blood flow restriction and uses a customized protocol developed with the use of a Doppler ultrasound to assess individual blood pressure values. Who is blood flow restriction therapy for? Anyone. Each patient will be screened to make sure that they are appropriate for blood flow restriction therapy. This treatment is frequently used post-injury, post-surgical, and with athletes, through, though may be appropriate for others as well. If you would like to learn more and see if you're appropriate for this type of treatment, call today. Hey, uh, what can I say? That's his lifestyle. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so, this show gets to be too much fun sometimes. <laughs> but we are in a part of the show where you've talked about your past, you've talked about your ancestry uh, with a mother who's half Lakota, half Irish, your father who was just a white American who uh, didn't want you to grow up like, like wanted you to go to a new culture and push you in that direction. I want to leave that behind and get to the part about how you took your own history of abuse with drugs and alcohol and decided that, that uh, to become someone who uh, then goes out and helps somebody else and makes this their profession. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that, how you made that change and went into this as a, as a profession, from a patient to a profession. Well, I think it's about, uh, I want to give what was given to me. Mm. Um, you know, somebody bothered to uh, hold the space for me to tell my story, and I was able to uh, make some changes and uh, essentially uh, reclaim or even uh, remember a lot of what uh, um, and recover uh, my own identity and who I am truly. So I wanted to give that back. Because it, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, I, I cannot keep this unless I give it away. You know, I, uh, it's, it's a... Uh, that's 12-step language. Yeah, so that's what I learned. And uh, I, it's true, and I, uh, I'm more fulfilled when I do that. Um, that's what keeps me going back. Um, it isn't so much for what... Uh, you have to help others. It's not yeah. for somebody yeah. else who doesn't mm -hmm. have this problem it may be uh, it may be optional. It's not optional on your part. You have to give back. I would say so. Uh, the alternative isn't good in the sense of uh, uh, I'm not fulfilled, mm -hmm. and, and uh, because it's it's like a calling. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. uh, it's yeah. meant to uh, uh, yeah. to be used. That's right. And uh, yeah. it was a, it's a gift. Do you remember the Do you remember mm -hmm. the day or the week or when it said, "I need to do this as a profession"? Well, I think when I. And I, how long ago was this? Well, this is 1979. I was in. So we're talking 41 years ago. Yeah. You don't look that old, Maureen. I don't. Alcohol no. like <laughs> preserves you, right, or something? Well. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might be honest. <laughs> yeah. You smooth talker. <laughs> I see why you like working with them. No. <laughs> yeah. So you remember that 41 years ago? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Any, any special yeah. experience or moment that said, I'm going to go from being a patient to actually being a, someone who gives back and helps oh. other people? Well, I think as I was working but you're doing it on a professional yeah. level. Yeah. Well, I think it's, 
Uh, I remember. Was it going to school? What was the first thing you had to do? When well, you I was went? working at the, in the state hospital psychiatric unit with, with adolescents, with kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, these were Lakota kids. Oh. And uh, the connection I had with them uh, and uh, how they responded uh, to me uh, kind of hooked me. Is that, you know, I, I, want, I want to do this. I want to uh, help others. And. Uh, so it was bringing in your heritage, yeah. Maury, mm -hmm. in who you are, and mm -hmm. they were able to bring that in. How yeah. fantastic yeah. is that? Well, there's a connection there that yep. uh, is, uh, is quite profound. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just like with my family. We get it right. uh, when we're yeah. with each other right. where, that nobody else right. can. So oh. with, uh, right. being around Lakota children mm -hmm. is a pretty special um, you know, I, I see myself, mm -hmm. and uh, they see me, and uh, mm -hmm. they accept. Yeah. There's a there's a level of innocence there that I just do. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how how old are we talking? And what was what was bothering them? Was there some commonality why they were all there? or Was it all totally individualistic? Well, they you know it's, it was a psychiatric hospital, so they were there either from uh, whether it's for drugs or. Um, when you say children, how old? These were like uh, adolescents from 14 to you know 21 even, but it's, uh, they were uh, there for either depression, mm -hmm. uh, suicide attempts, running away, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or being subject to you know some abuse. Um, so uh, you know they'd run away from home and uh, they'd run away from us at times, uh, you know. And, uh, so you have to ask them, well, why would you run away? And they'd say, you know, well, it's, it's an abusive situation. Yeah. It's logical to run away from an abusive well, situation. Well, there you go. So it's, that's a very healthy choice. I mean, your first, yeah. if you're if you're just in the public and you don't mm -hmm. know and you heard about so-and-so ran mm -hmm. away, you say, well, that's, that's a mm -hmm. terrible thing they did. Yeah. But yeah. if you're in an abusive situation, what, that's yeah. logical right. to run away from that. Right. Well, that's it, and it's, it, it kind of was born uh, your idea here. You know, don't right. diss my ability. Is uh, what you know, see the beauty in people. What is the what is well with you? Yeah. What are you doing right? Right. And they don't always. <clears throat> say that there's such a focus on this disorder. What's wrong with you? Right. But uh, that's what I enjoyed. And the connection was well. It's obvious to me. That's a pretty healthy choice. Yes. It is. So you, you got to recognize that. And so you validate that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not here to beat you up about running away. You know? Right. I understand, I understand why you had to do that. And, uh, because did you ever feel like running away? Oh yeah, yeah. It was you know, and well, and that's it. You know, you. We, so you could talk to them and say you ran away, yeah, but yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not. I didn't come from, you know, mm -hmm. the perfect family. I had to run away mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. now they know that they, you know, yeah. you, you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, you could talk to them. Yeah, I could, uh, you know, just relate with them in the sense of. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Not judging them, yeah, uh, and uh, just being uh, silent with them about that—that that that's uh, understandable, mm -hmm. and that uh, just gives them uh, uh, what some, as you described, empowerment. They yes. feel some power. That's right. And uh, that's mm -hmm. what uh, I think oh, the, yeah. the so resilience. Important. The resilience. You're building some resilience, yep. and they mm -hmm. see they are not as bad as uh, they think they are, no. or. Yeah. The others think they are so, mm -hmm. and they see what's right, and you build on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's what I, you know, I, I tell my patients as well. If they're really feeling bad about this, I say, well, you know, even a, even a broken clock's right twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you you're doing something right here? Yeah. But yeah. but so you went from there, and then you developed your own private practice. Well, I worked in uh, different organizations and different uh, organizations, not a private practice. Okay. No. Okay. No. But, uh, could could you see yourself doing that? Oh yeah, yeah I, I like private practice. I, well, in the sense of I, I did do it for uh, uh, a number of uh, years, but uh, mostly has been in organizations, treatment centers. And, do you have uh, a preference? Well, I like at this point I like the private practice more. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's probably more uh, independence. You know, working in organizations, there's a lot of stakeholders <laughs> that you have to yeah. uh, needs mm -hmm. to meet that. Uh, uh, and a lot of people to please. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you're in the room there with people, but you're, you're fully aware there's uh, 
a lawyer on you is through older. There's a, right. Mm -hmm. There's a regulators and the creditors right. and the, you yeah. know, payers and things like that. That uh, uh, which impinges on your own honesty. Well, you have to document it all for them, mm -hmm. so they know what happened mm -hmm. and what the plan is, all that, which isn't you know in itself bad, but it's uh, not bad, but uh, yeah. But the, it takes away from what you want to be doing. Is that well, yeah, what I, people, talking with them? What I really like to measure is uh, what the patients brought You can't put it down on paper. No, it's hard you know. to uh, measure that. So. You see a look in their eyes yeah. of hope. Yeah. What are you going to do? How are you going to document that? Yeah, exactly. right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult. So most of the job is, you know, it is a lot of that documentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they, they know. Justified for them getting reimbursed by right. some government agency or right. something, right? Yeah. yeah. So. It's a money thing. You know, so the health of the chart is one thing you have to yeah. measure. Right. And that's how I got graded, but uh, they didn't really measure the, the patient's outcomes, you know, how well healthy is the patient. I hope you do get yeah. to your own private practice. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope you, because I, I know you'd be good at this. Oh, thank you. You can't. You know, it's one thing to have an expert on the shows and know it all. You can't tell them anything. Um, but that's not you. Mm. And uh, you're still learning. Mm -hmm. You never want to go to somebody for help who's learned everything there is to know. Because mm. you can't relate to them. Most mortals are still in the process of learning. And when you have these people come to you for help in the future, mm. they're going to see that you're not a finished product either. That you're learning and you're helping them to learn. And you, and you have a connection there. It's not the perfect trying to help the imperfect. No, it isn't. It's a, it's a, it's a joint venture to learn about what the, what right. the, the patient knows. Because every time you've helped somebody, yeah. you've learned something and you've helped yourself. Oh yes, absolutely. It reinforces, you know, the, you know what works. You know, I use that metaphor of a of a golf shot. You know, it's, you don't ever totally master it, but you keep trying, and when you get that, uh, you connect. It's uh, it's uh, keeps you coming back. Is that so, what you do for uh, recreation, golf? Yeah, yeah, golf, and uh, you know, woodworking, things like that. That's uh, something. I used to do woodworking. Yeah. I used to do yeah. that. Yeah. Made some furniture yeah. for some years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm I was an athlete, and that was. Uh, uh, you were an athlete? That's hard yeah. to believe, Maury. Well, that, <laughs> how do you know that? <laughs> so you've, been, you've been telling Come on, didn't you say a thing. Disney Maury is an athlete. <laughs> Tell the truth now. Oh, I never said that. <laughs> golf, is not, golf is not athletics. <laughs> you know, golf is that you got lost in the woods and you're hitting, you're hitting something out of irritation. Oh, but these it are. It happens to be a little white ball. It's not a sport, Maury. It's not a sport. Oh, but the, it's a great metaphor. For what? Well, what I just was taught you. <laughs> what right at one ear and out the other ear, Maury? Oh well. That's on you. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> well, no charge. Then. No charge. <laughs> no. Oh, oh my God, God. Lee! I'm so bad. You you struggled up to get here. It does. Uh, did you have a question for Mark? Uh, well, no, I had more of a comment. Actually. Okay. It, um, I took a class at Crumple Center a while ago where we had to speak about what our impression of wisdom was. Mm. And mm. I got the teacher's attention by defining it by learning from your mistakes, was how I put it. Mm. You know, she kind of went. What did they say when you said that? Um, well, she looked a little aghast, you know. I mean, but she didn't to like me, it. Or she did like it. Um, no, well, she didn't quite. I don't think she liked it or disliked it. She just was taken aback. Yeah. I think in life, the things you struggle with and the things that you mess up with are where you, the learning happens. I mean, that's mm. kind of what I meant by it, and. You know, it's kind of what you were talking about, really. This guy knows about mistakes. He's been married six or seven times. Uh, no, I know. I've only been How married many? three. Only three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Accuracy is important. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, 
I mean, everybody makes mistakes in life, you know, and that's mm -hmm. kind of what, to me, ties us together, really. Mm -hmm. it, um, no, I agree. I think that's... It, uh, I mean, you have to admit it, number one, which can be mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. And then you have to learn from it, which can be even harder sometimes. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and if, then you if, have to figure out how do you explain that to other people. And that's kind of what we're all doing mm -hmm. in one form or another. Mm -hmm. I, think if you, I think if you don't learn from your mistakes, and this is a show about learning from your mistakes, you, can that remake you, you, you get into a smaller and smaller prison. It just seems to gnaw at you and always be there mm -hmm. that I made the mistake. Well, okay, that memory is uh, that memory is only there um, to try to get you to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's only that's the only reason okay. it's coming back. There's something valuable right around the corner. You're supposed to learn from the mistake, mm -hmm. and I'm going to hold you in this little cell here unless you come alive and open your eyes and say, this is what I need to be doing. This is what I need to learn from that. And then you get out of the jail. You get out of the jail cell. And a lot of that is, uh, is asking the, the, the right question there, too. Like, uh, I'm, I made a mistake is one thing, but to say I am a mistake. Oh, God, that's so important, Maury. You know, mm -hmm. That's the most important thing you said yeah. today. Yeah. You're not a mistake. Yeah. You're not a mistake. You, yeah. you made a mistake. Yeah. yeah. And if that, if you can, oh. that's got to be the essence of therapy, no matter if you're a grief mm -hmm. counselor or, mm -hmm. are you with me on this? Okay. You're, you made a mistake, mm -hmm. you're not a mistake. That's right. You know, that would be a great t-shirt. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you made a mistake, we, you're not we'll a mistake. We'll do that after. Yeah. Well, and that's, uh, because we do, we listen to ourselves. Because yeah. if you're a mistake, yeah. the only thing you're capable of is what? Yeah. Making mistakes. Right. That's it. If that's how you define yourself, right? Exactly. There's no other course of action for you but to continually make right. mistakes. Yeah. Well, at least I'm good at something. <laughs> no, not you. <coughs> this is one of the strongest men you'll ever see. Yeah. Yeah. No, not you, my friend. Whew. This well, is some it's a, show. It requires some. Uh, some bravery, as you said, you don't always want to admit those Ta -ta. things. But, uh, well, my yeah. ex-wife, my third wife now. Mm -hmm. Third wife. At, um, yeah. We ought to have some mental health, health counselor. You know, if you brought in three photographs of your, um, um, we could keep you'd them go, straight. oh, those are pretty incredible women, and they are. They are. Yeah. At, uh, they came to their senses, though, right? Um, well, no, I wouldn't <laughs> put it that way. But <laughs> at, um, <laughs> Kelly used to say that I think this is a quote from Ernest Hemingway. Human beings are stronger in the broken places. Oh, it, uh, I love that. Mm. Which yeah. is Lovely. part about, you mm -hmm. know, if you make mistakes and you admit it oh. and can move on from it, mm -hmm. yes. then you good. learn something from it and you're a stronger human being. Kelly is mm. a therapist herself, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, she's a licensed yeah. mental health counselor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're stronger, we're stronger in the broken places. Yes. Well, that is so wow. true. I think that's a, that's a great wisdom in that. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. she's a pretty wise woman. Yeah. At that. Yes. Yeah. yes, she is. I wish everybody uh, who comes on this show leaves with that mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, they're all coming on with problems and mm -hmm. issues and mm -hmm. things. It's, they're not problems. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I, I think is uh, at the... Uh, challenges. Challenges. Yeah, these are... Uh, challenges. There, there are problems, you know, to be solved, and, and that's, uh, that's um, what we're up against. To, uh, well, I guess, to me, I try to call them challenges. Just mm -hmm. it puts them in a more positive light. Right. It, uh, I mean, words are important. You know, I can, my left side doesn't work. I, uh. I'm sorry I got to interrupt. Uh, we got the one minute sign, and uh, I want to thank Maureen. Mm -hmm. Pamela, great to see you. We've, we've been away for about a month. Oh, we have yeah. we avoided a lot of bad weather. And Lee, I haven't seen you in a while, I my know. friend. Uh, great to see everybody. Great yeah. to have the crew together. Thank you for coming, Maureen. And 
Um, what is it we say at the end of the show? And who are you going to, what segment are you going to introduce? Um, I assume it's worth a minute with yes. Craig Worth. Please listen to Craig Worth. Oh my God, he's a Unitarian minister in Epping, and he's a great, great old friend, and he has these little couple Not minute in Epping. Uh, talks that are just wonderful. Not in him. Nottingham? Yes. That's the sheriff of Nottingham? Um, kind of. I yes. love that show. That's how I remember. Yeah. And what do we say at the end of the show? Remember, it's what you can do, not what you can. Thank you, everybody. Hello, my name is Craig Worth, and this is Worth a Minute. Well, that's the title, of course. You decide for yourself if it's worth a minute to you. We hope you'll get something from it, and we offer it to you for free with that hope in mind. I've come up with some messages and driven to the studio to record them as a gift to you. We're introducing our new theme music today. I composed this piece and gave it the title, Walk With Me. I originally composed it as a tribute for two friends who both lost their beloved dogs within two weeks of each other. Having lived through my own version of that loss a few times myself, I felt strong empathy with them. I felt like I had at least a pretty good idea of the pain they felt. The title Walk With Me refers to one of the great gifts dogs offer us, to walk out in the world in good company, sometimes whether we want to or not. The connection of empathy my friends and I shared with each other over the great sense of loss is also a sort of walking with someone. My chaplaincy training and experience helped me get better and better at walking with others, no matter what their beliefs or backgrounds. One of my hopes for these worth a minutes is that I can convey the sense that I am walking with you and that we are all walking with each other as we think about things together, share ideas, find the very many ways we are alike the very many common joys and worries, hopes and fears, and all the rest we share in the condition of being human. I suppose that the title, Walk With Me, is not only the theme for this program, it's also the theme for my life. What would your theme music be? What would you want it to be? What might you call the theme music for your life? Thanks for listening. See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful? Don't Diss My Ability is made possible through the generous support of Full Circle Community Thrift Store, helping individuals or families living with cancer. Our goal is to help alleviate the stresses of daily financial obligations during this time by providing financial assistance to those in need. Full Circle Community Thrift Store. Living Innovations. Providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include community connections, which facilitates employment, skill development, and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. Natural Care Wellness Center has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine seacoast for 18 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. 
Natural Care Wellness Center, offering gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuroemotional techniques, and massage therapy. And by One Sky Community Services. For over 30 years, One Sky has taken great pride in overcaring for those with developmental disabilities and acquired brain disorders. Dedicated to every individual it serves, giving them full comprehensive support and services essential to fulfilling the personal and professional potential and becoming a successful member of their community. Serving 24 Seacoast communities, call 603-436-6111 for further information. And by TMS Architects. New England design, redefined.